Teachers of Reddit, what clicked about a pupil after meeting their parents? Obligatory not a teacher, but I work at a psychiatric hospital for children and teens. I work directly with the kids, so I don't get to meet the parents often. We had a super sweet little girl on my unit once. They said it was because she assaulted her little three-year-old sister. But the whole thing just didn't make sense. I can read kids well, and usually the ones that are violent and dangerous to family have a certain attitude. She just didn't. She was meek, respectful, and just overall the easiest patient I'd ever had. When visitation came, her parents showed up and it all started to make sense. They would just berate her for everything. Here is this little nine-year-old girl and her mom is telling her she's effed up. Why can't she be normal, etc., etc., and this kid just took it. Not for long, though, because I am allowed to remove the child at my discretion if I think it will make it worse for her, and so I did. And promptly called CPS. It turns out that all the abuse she was doing to her sister was just the mother abusing both of them and then blaming it on the little girl. You will all be happy to know that she was moved in with her grandparents in a different state and is thriving and happy. Edit. Thank you for the gold, y'all. That ending made me happy. F that girl's mother, though. Edit. Guys, please stop making the same joke. Also, kudos to CPS for stepping in like that. My friend was abused by her parents, and when she fractured her arm, CPS was called by the school. They told the parents not to leave visible marks, then never came back. It was pretty effed up. What the hell? Child Protective Services gave the parents advice for not getting caught abusing their children? That makes me so angry. I noticed quite a few negative stories here. Well, here is a positive one where it clicked. I have a student who is really friendly, really smart, and amazing at English. I am an ESL teacher abroad. She's always really friendly to me and always really hardworking. She constantly helps other kids in class who struggle with the material and overall, just a great girl. I met her dad once at a school event and holy goodness was this guy awesome. He was a really genuine and generous character and even invited me to get to know different parts of the city with his family. I could definitely tell they had a close bond and that he had raised her really well. Just an example of good people raising other good people. Edit. A word. I bet a few like that. One kid, sweetest kid alive, he was like what you imagine an actual fourth grader to be like. He was pretty much like a curious puppy. Flip side, he had a solid 13% in the class. He just couldn't figure out how to put numbers together. I actually cried when he learned to cross multiply and see the wheels turn in his head. Thing is, compared to a lot of kids, he had lots of reasons to act out and be violent and could be a jokester with friends. He could lash out, but never did compare to other classmates. Met his parents, Literal salt-of-the-earth types. Dad was older and kind of had that old spun country wisdom to him. Told me that they've been trying hard with him, but he just seems to not click right. Like, read eight hours a day with him and nothing comes right. What I noticed is that they were patient as all living hell, and so was he. I wish we had non-behavioral special ed because he needed it bad. Still, got him to cross-multiply. These are the kind of people that we should be investing in as much as possible because they are probably more likely to use their success in life compassionately. Oh, for sure, I got him to talk about dogs once and he just opened up like mad. It was adorable and I knew that if he could just get something working, he would do something good with his life, which coming out of where he lived would be a huge success. My fifth grade teacher said she understood why at times I couldn't finish my homework or fall asleep in class after seeing my mother had cancer. I'm sure before that, she thought I was lazy. She became super close with my mom after, and the day my mom passed away, still in fifth grade, she cried in class when they messaged her, and that's how I knew it was over. I personally believe teachers make a huge impact in a child's life, and she really helped me out and understood. I'm very thankful that you had a teacher during that time. I can't even begin to fathom the pain you went through then. I'm so thankful for these stories of teachers who actually care. I know it's been a while, but I'm sorry for your loss. He's actually in sixth grade now. It's not been that long. Yeah, I love hearing about teachers who actually care about how their students are doing. I've had a few teachers who always assumed all kids are a-holes and they don't care if we fail or not. Those classes are the ones I did the worst in. I feel it's really important to make the kid feel like they matter. They will probably enjoy coming to your class and want to succeed. I want to be a teacher in the future, and this is a value I will carry to my classroom. This is from back when I was doing my student teaching. There was a girl in one of my classes that never did any homework in class, turned in her homework late, and would ignore huge projects until literally the last minute and then asked to come in for help every day at lunch slash after school to make up for the missing work. Eventually, I caught her cheating on a quiz. She had written down the answers, put them in the plastic cover of her binder, and put her binder down by her feet. 
I took her quiz, gave her a zero, and told her that cheating wasn't allowed. About a week later, we had parent-teacher conferences. The girl came in with her mother, who took out every assignment that had been graded and handed back, and proceeded to argue with me over individual points. Things along the lines of, well, she spelt it all right, so that deserves some credit, right? Or, she circled the right answer, so she should still get some credit when that right answer had been crossed off and then another answer had been selected. This took nearly an hour to go through. Finally, the mother brought up the quiz and I told her about the cheating. The mom said, well, you should give her some credit on it. She was pretty clever to think of that trick. From then on, I made sure to schedule my meetings with myself, my mentor teacher, and the principal present. Jesus, does that mom think that it's smart to cheat everything in life too? Cheaters never prosper is BS. Bad cheaters never prosper. Good cheaters prosper all the effing time. There is probably nothing else that will allow someone to succeed in life more than a willingness to break the rules when there is low risk and high reward for doing so. Lying on your resume that you have a PhD from MIT when you never even went to MIT, much less got a PhD, will get your ass caught. Lying on your resume by exaggerating your accomplishments, but only things that can't realistically be checked, will get you a better job. Obviously, it's not like serious life stuff, but I've always found this sort of said something about people. I would make food deliveries to a water park and we'd go through back gates and such to enter. Often when we'd come through the gate, there would be families trying to use the employee entrances to get their car. I know it wasn't a big deal because they were leaving, not breaking in, but it just irks me partly because I know my family is the same way. I know they know they're not supposed to do that, but there's no risk involved, so F it, right? And as employees, we just ignored the people because $9 an hour is not enough to get cursed out by a drunk, smelly, overweight dude and his family. This girl in prep already showed traits of a narcissist slash sociopath. She was an extremely clever but lacked empathy, manipulative, blatantly lied, stole, and so on. Yes, this might just sound like characteristics of any child, but there was definitely something different about her. Anyway, met her mom, who refused to accept that her child would do anything wrong, and when the child admitted she stole a girl's bracelet because she wanted it, her mom said, that's okay, we can go buy you one on the way home. Does she want to raise a sociopath? Because that's how you raise a sociopath. Can you raise someone to become a sociopath? Is that possible? Genuinely asking. There's no definitive genetic evidence yet, so the nature versus nurture debate is still ongoing. There are physical aspects in brain function and structure that are present in sociopaths, but upbringing also has a large impact on sociopathy or sociopathic behaviors, now called antisocial personality disorder. I was telling the parent that their child was generally inattentive, he would look around, fidget, and just nod along smiling when I knew he hadn't been listening. As I was consulting my notes, I looked up to see the parents looking around the room, bouncing their leg. As soon as they realized that I was done talking, they nodded and smiled. Edit. This child did not have ADHD or autism, he just had a short attention span. I was teaching in a private school in the Middle East, and although most students should have been ESL, they were taught English at a higher level. I figure he just didn't care that much. They say there is a genetic component to ADD. 71% heritable, to bring that into context, height is 81% heritable. Mm-hmm. College freshman was constantly late, didn't turn work in on time or at all, etc. She had an excuse for every single thing. I wasn't even asking, she just volunteered excuses. After getting a D in my class, which was frankly a bit generous as her actual grade was a high F, her mother called me. I wasn't allowed to discuss students' performance with anyone, including their parents, and I told her as much. Her mother then, unprompted, gave me a long string of excuses for her daughter and, oddly, herself. I kind of thought, oh, that makes sense now. Her mother called me. As her kid is at college, university level, WTF. It's more common than you think, unfortunately. I think college professors are the ones who pushed for that rule of not sharing grades, and I don't blame them. Edit. Learned about FERPA. Sounds like a pretty solid piece of legislation. It's not so much a rule as a federal privacy law. Kid named Rowdy. Super nice kindergartner. Wondered why the hell his name was Rowdy. Met his mom. Dad was MIA. Lived with grandma. In a hoarder house and they smoked inside with the window closed. He graduated last spring. Saw him walking in the rain at 9am. Not sure where he was headed, but all I could think was he was headed in the wrong direction. He was put on this earth to kick butt and chew bubblegum. And he's all out of bubblegum. That's so sad. You know his circumstances are not set to support him well. To see someone who you think, if I could just change something, 
but you can't. I know we all love a great underdog story where the kid with the world against him succeeds against all odds, but that doesn't happen as often in real life. People with these great success stories where they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps are the few percent that was able to. For one of those success stories, there's probably hundreds more where the person didn't succeed. I was that kid. Father worked shifts, and when he was home, he was doing backyard car repairs to help make ends meet. Not because he didn't earn a good living, he actually did, but because my mother was a gambling addict. Instead of addressing the problem, he focused on solving the symptoms. I went to school from an unheated house with a mother still in bed and no breakfast in freezing weather with no coat because she spent the money on gambling. Went for years without medical treatments for the same reason. No toothpaste, no hair conditioner, no haircuts, old shoes, socks, and underwear with holes. All because anything she could make us do without went to gambling. P.E. was done in the frigid school system in bare feet and a t-shirt because gym shoes and sweatshirts cost money that could be used to make bets instead. One day, the vice principal called me to her office, not to reprimand me, but to give me the optional pieces of uniform I didn't have, like a coat and a school blazer. They were the options without which you froze half to death as you walked or biked several miles to school. She didn't make a big deal out of it, she simply met a need. Her act of kindness lit a spark in me. To this day, almost 40 years later, I still put money, time, and hard work into caring for others and charity work. I'm the mom who will volunteer at school, quietly contribute anything the teachers are short of, that person. Not for recognition or thanks. In fact, I'm embarrassed if you do that. It's because nearly 40 years ago, someone cared. Sorry you went through what you did. Kudos for turning it into compassion and paying it forward to those in need. You rock. Well, you are sweet. Thank you so much for taking the time to write that. My intent was actually to encourage the teachers and other childcare workers out there. Keep doing what you're doing, even when it seems hopeless. That act of the VP that day took less than 30 minutes. Yet close to 40 years later, it still brings tears to my eyes. You never know which little act of kindness will spark a lifelong passion in one of those kids, just because someone cared. Kids like I was are not just physically starving. In fact, that's not even the worst part. The worst part is their intense hunger for a glimpse of kindness or affection. Imagine if you were never hugged, smiled at, or even talked too nicely. The effect even a gentle smile or compliment can have on the starving heart of a kid who's completely bereft of simple positive human interactions can be powerful. Not a teacher, but a student. In kindergarten, we had this kid who was really odd and smelled funny, but he seemed cool, so we would hang out at recess. I had a birthday party, and it was only supposed to last maybe a few hours. All of the kids but him went home fairly early, but it was really late and his parents still hadn't showed up. I was getting tired and wanted to go to bed, so my parents set up some blankets for us in the living room and we had a sleepover. At 2 a.m., his parents finally showed up after multiple calls with no answer. Instantly, I realized what was up. Even as a small child, I knew these parents were the definition of white trash. They reeked of alcohol. My mom's side of the family is full of alcoholics, so I knew what it smelled like. They also told some BS story about how they had new tires off their car and the speedometer showed the wrong speed and they got pulled over and some other BS. It all clicked why he acted so odd and why he smelled. It was cigarette smoke. At the start of first grade, he never showed up and the like a month into the year, he was there for a few days. Then randomly in third grade, he showed back up again for a few weeks. I never saw him again after that. I looked him up on Facebook a while back, and it looks like he is following in his parents' footsteps, up falling into every white trash stereotype. I asked my parents about this kid a while ago, and they said that the reason he wasn't with us in school for a few years is he got taken away by Child Protective Services, which my mom called. Then he came back the W times because that's when his parents got him back, but he was taken away again, and that's why he left us. I knew a girl in school. I wish I'd been more clever or perceptive or something. She was constantly filthy, absolutely reeked. Literally the filthiest human being I have ever met. One day, multiple teachers made her take a shower. I was walking to get something I'd forgotten my gym locker. This poor girl was screeching like a banshee. The teachers were apologizing over and over, but they'd been ordered to give her a shower. It was a health issue. They were pretty taken aback by her reaction. I'll never forget that sound. I spoke to her a few times, she was like a dictionary. If you asked her a word, she would rattle off dictionary information. Spelling, noun, verb, adjective, definition, use it in a sentence, and could provide synonyms and antonyms. One day I saw her walking home from school and her dad meeting her halfway. He just oozed creepiness, something about the way he put his arm around her. 
Many years later, I was talking to an older woman who had just escaped her abusive parents who were in a Satanist cult. She started describing her life, the abuse she suffered, the issues she faced, and some other things. It hit me that these matched exactly with the girl I knew in school. Mainly, they had made her terrified to be anywhere near water so she would never get baptized. I remember that poor girl's screams as the teachers tried to wash her. Maybe she wasn't exactly in a cult, but I remember her being very confused about religions. I don't know. I think about that girl a lot. I remember her first name, and that's it. Yeah, she was clearly abused. As another kid, I just didn't notice. I thought she was a weird, stinky kid. Nice and smart and really withdrawn. Obviously an extreme example here, but I had a student, an 8th grader, who was quiet to the point of absolute silence, but who did extraordinarily well with the written word. A few times he showed up with bruises, which I naturally reported, but he was adamant that they were from other students. Surprisingly, his parents came in for PTC and seemed relatively normal. Until he went to speak for himself, and I saw his father grip his arm so tightly that it left a mark. I understood immediately that his parents basically didn't let him speak at all for fear of reprisal. A few weeks afterward, the kid stopped showing up to school, and word eventually got around that he got caught up in a meth lab explosion in his parents' house and was covered head to toe in second and third degree burns. He came back a month or so later covered in bandages. He couldn't move, write, or really do anything without excruciating pain. I'd never cried so hard as I did that day. Sorry, I know it got off track, but there are certain stories that stick with you. Oh, jeez. Any idea how he is now? Unfortunately, no idea. I've since moved on and haven't been in contact. Didn't actually meet the parents, but was recently told about the parents of a ninth grader I have. Apparently, the dad is super verbally abusive, constantly belittling the son. Like, bordering on reportable abuse, but just not quite over that line, his former teachers said. This kid acts out, is constantly seeking positive attention, has no self-esteem despite being pretty smart and capable. It all just makes a lot of sense now. Edit. For all the people who are saying that I should report it, I have not personally witnessed the abuse, nor have I even met the parents in question, so it wouldn't be appropriate for me to report it anyway. In fact, in my state, there are penalties if I were to do so. But moreover, I trust my colleagues who have taught him and have witnessed the negative interactions with the dad, and I believe that they have the requisite experience and judgment to have been able to make the determination not to report the father. Edit. Thank you all for the concern, though. I am very sorry for those who have gone through something like this. I'm the kid. When I was growing up, I'd get pulled aside and asked if I smoked. I'm talking elementary school. My parents, much like someone else had mentioned, smoked in the house with the windows closed. I was heavy, really heavy, with a lot of confidence issues that still stick around today. I had problems with anger growing up, not so much now, but I was an excellent student when you could inspire me to focus or found something I was passionate about. They'd meet my parents and nod to me, my dad, who would work swing and overtime every day almost to support my mom's two to three pack a day habit at the time, now it's only one pack, supposedly. My mom, who basically looked strung out on drugs, but was really just taking so many antipsychotics and pain meds that she might as well have been. My parents tried to be supportive of me, but I'm not sure they really knew how. I'd keep a bottle of Febreze on me starting in middle school because the questioning from teachers got worse. I'm graduating college in June even though it's taken me twice as long as it should have, mostly because of money, a lack of guidance, and my own mental BS. I got a job working in student government for the first time ever and was sent to a conference in Washington, D.C. by my college last year. I worked my first non-minimum wage job this summer and got invited to come back with another raise. Edit. Holy moly, R.I.P. my inbox and thank you to the lovely stranger with gifting my first gold. Thank you so, so, so much for all of the lovely comments. I'm trying not to cry on the train to my vacation. It means the world to me. I'm graduating college in June even though it's taken me twice as long as it should have, mostly because of money, a lack of guidance, and my own mental BS. It doesn't matter that your graduation took twice as long as it should have. What matters is, you took it in your own hands in spite of your own demons. You had the courage to say, I got this, and to start making crap happen. That is a revolutionary attitude. I am truly glad to hear you've done well in spite of everything life threw at you and that you found the resilience, the grit, to roll up your sleeves and fix other people's mistakes. I hope that you shoot for the stars and that you're not afraid to fail. Remember that even stars fall sometimes, and when they do, people wish on them. Edit. Well, this kind of blew up. I'm truly amazed. I could have a positive impact on some of you and maybe keep the darkness at bay a little bit. Also, to the mysterious Redditor who gave me gold, 
thank you very much. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.